Hello everyone, Time to Grind here, and today I wanted to talk about Animal Crossing New Horizons. And Animal Crossing New Horizons came out at the perfect time that humanity needed it to. With everything going on in the world right now, especially this pandemic that we're all going through together, Animal Crossing is just the perfect game imaginable. Right now, everyone is being forced to stay inside and isolate themselves from their friends and family, and Animal Crossing is not just just another game to play because you're bored, but it's an entire other world and community and group of friends. And Animal Crossing, to me anyways, has always just been so special and unique. It's really hard to compare it to other games or even explain what makes Animal Crossing Animal Crossing, but I want to attempt to do that with Animal Crossing New Horizons right now. And so just kind of simply, it's just another world to get lost into and it just radiates positivity and hope and creativity and imagination with everything it does in the game. And on top of that, the game runs in real time and kind of mimics the real world. So shops are open during the day and they close at night. Seasons change with the seasons in real world, depending on what hemisphere you're on. Uh, and just kind of stuff like that make, that make it really feel like it's much more than a game. It's like an extension of your everyday now that you own Animal Crossing. And because of this, kind of a small disclaimer, I obviously have not done a lot of this stuff in terms of everything you can do in Animal Crossing because I'm just playing Animal Crossing the way it's meant to be played. I know a lot of people are kind of cheating a little bit. It's a single player game, so I'm not like mad or anything like that, uh, but you can actually switch the clock on your Switch. Uh, hat, get it, switch and switch, but you can switch the clock to kind of progress the day and trick the game into thinking it's a new day. Uh, and so some people I feel like are just trying to get as much content out as fast as possible for Animal Crossing. But for me, I just tried to get as much progression done as I could naturally in the first couple of days because I wanted to play Animal Crossing the way I believe Animal Crossing is meant to be played. So, you know, small little disclaimer, haven't explored everything you can in this game, have not done everything you can do in this game. Uh, at the time, time of, you know, recording this video. Uh, I'm one day away from getting my museum, but other than that, I've kind of done everything you can do up until that point. So, I mean, this game has a billion different things you can do in it. You can catch fish, you can find rare insects, you can decorate your house, you can visit your friends, grow exotic fruits, hang out with other villagers, etc, etc, etc. And all of that might not sound the most engaging on paper, you know, each kind of individual thing, but just being able to do whatever you want really whenever you want in this game makes it just so amazing and the fact that it's kind of just this real-time thing so if you're you know doing chores in your house and then you're like you know what I want to do chores in Animal Crossing you can pop it open do you know maybe clear all the weeds and then you can put it down and then you know maybe before you, you go to bed you're like oh I want to get some fruit so you know before you sleep at Animal Crossing you go pick some fruit it's kind of just it's there for you to use that world however and whenever you want to and there's also progression in the game so the first day is kind of like just a tutorial day. You go to sleep and then you wake up and you're synced with the real world time. And so from there, you can start donating things to Tom Nook. And after you donate five things to him, the very next real world day, uh, Blathers, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, the museum owl comes. And then for him, you can donate 15 unique items to him. And then two days later, and this is real world time, by the way, he comes and he creates his museum. At the same time, you kind of can also upgrade the shop and you do that by providing supplies to Timmy and Tommy and they will upgrade the shop the next day after you give them all of their supplies. Uh, and in the first couple of days, you can also get, you know, new tools to jump the rivers, to climb ledges, uh, build bridges. And the latest thing in terms of progression that I've been doing in my game is I have been working on finding the best place for three new villagers to move into. So I have to decide where their houses go, and then I have to craft all of the furniture that they're going to want. And then either put it like in this little drop box in front of their house, or if it's outdoor furniture, put it outside of their house. And so, you know, you could spend weeks doing all of this progression stuff. So if you're just playing 30 minutes, 45 minutes a day, this could maybe take you weeks. For me, it's taken a couple of days to do kind of what I've been talking about. And also if you change the time on your switch, like some people are, and I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad thing, just I don't think that's the way you should play it. Um, but that's just my opinion, but you could technically do that all even faster. Uh, but you really can do Animal Crossing however you want to do it. So you can take your time and you can just kind of explore a little bit more. Uh, if you want to just keep doing progressing as fast as you can, you can kind of do it all as fast as you can, but it's Animal Crossing. It's just this world, 
like I've kind of been trying to hammer this whole review, it's just a world where you can do whatever you want. And there happens to be some progression, but in that progression, it kind of just allows you to do more of whatever you want. So by opening up the museum, you have this place where if you're fishing or you're catching insects or you're finding fossils, and you find new ones of them, you can put them in the museum. And getting the shop just allows you to buy new items and stuff like that. And uh, I think you actually have to start doing that path before you get the ladder to climb up the ledges and stuff like that. But it kind of just keeps opening up more and more things for you to do. On top of all of this, uh, a new addition to the Animal Crossing franchise is something called Nook Miles, and I, I absolutely love these. So you get Nook Miles by completing achievements or milestones, and they could be things like just harvesting a bunch of fruit or picking a ton of weeds and selling them. And on top of that, there are dailies that give you double Nook Miles the you know first time you complete them, and then after that they get refreshed. So as an example, you know you could wake up and because I think it resets at 5 a.m. every day. Um, um, the, like the new Animal Crossing day. So you could get up, all your Nook Mile like daily quests are there. One of them could be chop down a tree and it would give you 200, but because it's the first daily, it doubles it so you could get 400 Nook Miles by doing that. When you complete it, it gets replaced with, it could be something like catch five fish. And then if you complete that, it keeps getting refreshed. So if you want to just play for hours and just do as many of them as you can and just rack up on Nook Miles, you could. And then the milestones, like I said, are just really cool that I think are gonna take hundreds of hours for everybody to finish them all because it's things like, okay, well, uh, this category is going to be catching fruit. So when you, or not catching fruit, you know, harvesting fruit. So when you harvest like 50 fruit, you get this milestone, you get some nook miles. Then the next milestone might be, you got to do that for 500 and then 5,000. I don't know like the extent of how far they go. Uh, and you can also spend those nook miles on a bunch of different upgrades. So you could make your inventory hold more. You can get upgraded tools. You can get more hairstyles. Uh, you can upgrade the kind of like custom editor that I'll talk about in a little bit um, and those are kind of some early on things on top of that you can also buy tours to other randomly generated islands so for 2,000 nook miles you can visit a completely random island that is kind of just generated and you can take as much as you can from that island so you can pick their fruit sometimes they'll have different fruit from your island you can catch the insects there the fish uh, and on top of that some of the villagers uh, will be there and you can actually recruit them to come live on your island if you find one that you really really want so say there's a villager that you know you want from the older games and if he's in this one if you see him in one of these exotic islands you can try to actually recruit him to come live or her on your island and just the nook mile achievements are just really awesome and help the game out because even if you like have a bad feeling moment, like if you get passed out due to getting attacked by a spider, I think that's technically an achievement the first time and you get some nook miles. So it can even kind of turn some negative, you know, things into a positive because it's like, hey, you experienced this, take some nook miles and they can kind of do that for everything in the game. So pretty much everything in the game that you can do has some type of nook mile like achievement or milestone attached to it. And I think that's really, really cool. On top of that, the characters in this game are just so believable and amazing. You really start to get attached to them. I mean, I find myself talking to them a ton, not because I'm trying to get something out of them or I'm not trying to do like a quest or anything, but just because they're interesting to talk to. I mean, all of them have their own personalities and everything like that. Uh, one of the two starter villages on my island was like this dog that's just obsessed with fitness and he's constantly talking about how he's going on jogs or, you know, he's trying to do CrossFit or stuff like that and trying to pump me up and try to do stuff like that and they also react to things that you're doing so when I upgraded my tent to a house I had some play you know the characters actually like go up to me and be like oh your house looks really cool you'll have to invite me over sometime and you know they're, they're, they react to the things that you do in the you know island and they all have their own personalities and it really makes them feel like these friends that you kind of start getting attached to uh, and on top of that if you not only want to you know do stuff with NPCs you can do stuff with friends so locally you can play with you know friends and family members and you can all be on the same island you're actually forced to all be on the same island and so every person can have their own house though and they can have you know they can kind of do their own things but the problem is is the world is just the world and it's kind of in real time so if someone picks up all of the you know fruit from all the trees and another player logs on they can't do that because all the fruit has been picked so if you have a bunch of people that actually want to kind of do their own things with their own island and have a lot of stuff to do you're gonna have to buy completely different switches that's what i actually had to do with my girlfriend we had to get a switch light for her because she really wanted to play animal crossing but we're both the type of people that you know kind of want to do as much as we can in it and get super addicted to it 
And so that, but the thing is though, is you can online play and even local play if like there's two switches, you can visit each other's islands. So I can uh, visit any of my friends' islands online or locally, um, especially with the pandemic going on right now, most of it will be online, uh, but it's a really nice way to connect with other people that play it. Uh, and on top of that, if you become BFFs in the game, you can actually interact with stuff on their island. So you can pick some fruit off their trees and bring it to yourself and just being able to interact with each other is really really awesome. Uh, you also have the crafting in this game and the crafting in this game is actually pretty cool. So you find all these DIY recipes that allow you to craft different things. So whether it's new tools or just you know furniture furniture or like crafting benches that actually have like effects or anything like that. I mean you can do a bunch of stuff and you constantly are unlocking new things to craft and you get the materials mainly just by like getting wood off of trees or hitting rocks and getting iron and stuff like that. None of them are really super hard to make um, and I actually really like the crafting in this game. I can't say exactly why, I just, you know, it, I tend to not like crafting in a lot of other games, but it's not that bad in this game. Uh, there is dura durability on the tools, so your tools will constantly break. You can eventually get better ones that break less frequently, uh, but that is something to note because I know a lot of people really don't like that, myself included, but just still somehow it doesn't necessarily seem that bad. And I think the reason is, is because in this game, there's not a bunch of conflict. You're not constantly stressing out about having to kill enemies and stuff like that. So when something breaks, you're like, oh, okay, that gives me something else to do because you're ultimately just playing this game as a simulator so if a shovel breaks you just kind of take like a three minute little detour and if you don't have the things you just collect them and then you create it and it's kind of just that and I think because you're not super you know in all this drama and this you know gunplay and you know shooting a bunch of people uh, if you're just playing Animal Crossing, it gives you something to do, and I think that's why, to me anyways, it makes me a little bit less annoyed. Uh, the only thing I will say is with crafting, and just kind of the game in general, there are kind of some quality of life changes that I wouldn't mind seeing. So as an example, when you craft things, it can kind of take a little bit of time. Um, you can speed it up by like spam pressing the A button. Uh, but like on top of that, say you want to craft like an upgraded shovel, you have to first craft the like terrible shovel and then you use that to craft your upgraded shovel but I would love it if like it just knew you had the materials to craft the terrible shovel it would just automatically let you create the new shovel and just kind of like maybe even make the animation like three seconds longer to show you that you're crafting that shovel and then do it but just kind of do it all in one and just the UI in general can feel like a little tedious. It kind of puts everything through like dialogue options so even the settings in the game you have to like talk with someone to like change the settings. There's not like a lot of just UI stuff. And I think it's because it's trying to make the game this believable other world, which is fair. And I'm not really complaining about it too much. It just, it is noticeable sometimes you're like, oh, I really wish I could speed this process up, especially when it's something that you've done a million times. Like when I have to craft another shovel because my shovel broke, I don't want to have to craft the old shovel and then the new shovel and, you know, kind of do this whole process. It's not terrible. Just, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing some of those quality of life changes. Uh, another real cool feature with this game is you can create your own artwork and use it in a bunch of different ways. So you can make like face paint. So I saw actually some real cool creative things as people with like say birthmarks on your face. You can actually replicate that in the game and just make your you in the game feel like you even more. Uh, you can make like clothes designs. You can do wall art. Uh, everything you make you can use QR codes and like share them with other people. There's even like websites already where you can upload a picture. It'll create it in the thing and then give you a QR code to download. And I've seen some really clever ideas online. I mean, one of my favorite music artists is this guy named Watsky, and someone was making art of his album covers and putting them on his wall to make it look like he had these Watsky albums in his game. And I've been seen some really creative things uh, in the game, and I think it's just something that's going to be making it like shareable even more. I just keep seeing things pop up in my feed on Twitter or Reddit uh, or you know Discords that I'm on, and I think that adds to this game a lot. Um, the game just looks fantastic. It has the typical charm you could expect in an Animal Crossing game. Same goes with the music. It's really magical. Uh, and apparently I've heard that after a while of the progression, you eventually unlock like special music that actually changes every hour, like the old Animal Crossing game. So if you're worried, don't worry about that. And just, I mean, overall, Animal Crossing is just a game that completely like takes you out of whatever miserable things that are happening in your day-to-day -day life. And it just kind of gives you a little joy and hope and escape from whatever terrible things are going on in the world it just is it's just good for your soul I'm telling you Animal Crossing is just good for your soul and you know 
that can be important sometimes to escape from all that stuff, especially with the things going on in today's world. But I'm going to be playing this Animal Crossing game for hopefully months and months and years and years, uh, especially if we're all isolated in our houses. That's definitely something to do. And I think, like I said, that's one of the hugest reasons why I think this, this is the game that humanity needed right now. But if you are looking for just an escape from everything going on right now and you want something that just is super positive and fun and happy and amazing, I would definitely recommend Animal Crossing New Horizons. I know Doom just came out and I absolutely loved that. But at this point, Animal Crossing New Horizons is probably my game of the year so far this year. It'll be interesting to see if anything tops it. But if you have played this game or seen people played it, uh, I would love to know your guys' opinions in the comments down below. Uh, you know, what are you enjoying? What's unique about your villages or anything like that? Let me know all down there. Love talking with you guys. And if you enjoyed this video, then consider leaving a like down below and subscribing to see more content. New videos come out about twice a week. I try to review at least two games a week. And if you guys are having a great day today, I hope you continue having a great day. If you guys aren't having a great day, I hope you guys start having a great day. But either way, guys, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. See you guys next time.